when there is an advertisement for a job opportunity and somebody has first degree and somebody has master's degree and both of them applied and you can guess the answer the one with the master stand the chance now watch this the countries with more universities and quality education they naturally prosper naturally go to America I don't know how many universities they have naturally prosper I was reading something recently I saw that the foreign student that goes to school in America add 42 billion to the American economy I read it black and white the whole world I mean there is even a commotion at the embassy people looking for visas to go to school and all the world there's foreign students America receive school fees the money they spend they add 42 billion plus to the economy who comes to school here the greatest one of the greatest power in our time is the power of information why because within it lies the power of transformation so when you are informed you'll be transformed hmm? and so this morning even if you think you, don't ever deceive yourself because you have married for 20 years you don't need knowledge jesus said jesus said can i tell you what jesus said you are not ready to listen to what i'm saying Don't ever deceive yourself because some people are going to deceive themselves. Marry for 40 years and some of you have enjoyed marriage. Yes, sir. No. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Huh? Jesus said, You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yes, sir. Apostle Paul said that let him that think he knows something know that he knows nothing yet. No, did I tell you what Jesus said? I couldn't tell you that one. Let me come back. Jesus said that if you want to be great in the kingdom, be like a little child. Now, little children don't get tired of learning. No, that's right. That's right. There's a book, I don't know whether they look it. I pray that they will change the education system in Ghana. It's my prayer. But there's a book called my first book of. Oh, no, no, no. Eh? Oh, so book will be now. Lie, lie, dear blue. No. You switch it, right? It's been a while. I'm not 10 years old. My first copy book. Eh? You will write, ah, when you get it wrong, you go in, uh, eraser, come and write. And. I don't remember a lot of things about my childhood, but that one I remember. If I we love the writing and that we make a mistake so that we can go and clean and write again. One of the reasons why you are struggling is that you think you have arrived. One of the problems with this generation is that they even come to church thinking that what you are preaching they know. And another problem is that because they think they know they don't practice so actually i was trying to diagnose our problem and i saw that we don't have preaching of the word problem we have practicing of the word problem no generation has the word and this generation since jesus that no generation has had abundance of bible than this generation so sit down and hear the word of god i'm going to talk about family life i'm going to talk about marriage why some are inside they are trying to run away some have not run because of what people will say some are trying to run, but they are looking at which window to run through. Some are trying to enter, and they know if you have knowledge. Today, God told me something. And when I say God speaks to me, believe it. God says, son, marriage is not an experiment. No. I heard it from God. He said, the reason you must take this thing serious is that people are experimenting it. It's not a laboratory exercise. I'm going to share some things with you. It's not an experiment. Some of the young girls that are going to marry, some people are married because others have married. Some are doing wedding because somebody has done it. Some even don't prepare for marriage, they prepare for wedding. So watch this. Since Jesus died, there is no generation that divorced like our generation. Some of the divorce say they marry for one month. A lawyer was telling me that the latest one, how many? Eight days. Yeah, there's statistics. After eight days, me and I'm tired. One girl told me, I'm, I'm very, uh, 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 what do we call it? He said, he, uh, I mean, he, she really wants to leave the marriage. He, I'm not a happy woman at all. I said, what is the problem? He said, my husband's snow. 
Then I asked her a question, when he's swallowing, where are you? I said, and I said, why are you not sleeping? If, if, if I'm sleeping with you and I'm snoring, and you are asleep, will you hear the snore? No. Tell your neighbor, sleep. 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 <laughs> you don't understand it. You are just there. People are getting married and falling out. Hi. Sit down this week. Come and hear God's word. The, one of the things we are going to do, if anything has damaged, it must be repaired. Yeah. Can I say that again? If something is damaged, it must be what? Repaired. The way you service your car, service your marriage. The way we maintain things in our house, we don't maintain the marriage. I saw that when the marriage thing is getting involved, the only thing, one of the things on earth that God gets involved is when people are getting married. The moment you see people are like, 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 like Douglas and, and what do we call it? And, and Pat came to marry yesterday. When we see people walking into the altar, God is involved. He gets involved because marriage is his idea. It's no man's idea. It's no man's idea. Number two, let me warn you this. I'm not going to talk about earthly wisdom. I'm not going to talk about what you learn from Oprah Winfrey. Most of the people that can't see married, they are not even married. I'm sorry to just offend you just in case you go to church. One day, I was watching Ghana TV and I saw a Roman father was teaching marriage. How many of you have, have seen that person before? And I said, eh, Father, please, spare us. Spare us. I'm begging you. I don't know whether he heard me, but I spoke to him on the television. I said, Father, please, this thing is not a theology. It's not a theological matter. This thing is a practical matter. You are not, oh my goodness. That is why it's very debatable that theologians believe that Apostle Paul could write about marriage because he was married before. He converted from Judaism to Christianity and because he was a Pharisee, automatically one of the requirements is that your wife must leave you. He couldn't write the things he write if you have not practiced it. No. I beg the father for some time I've seen that he's off and thank God for that. Because now it's not something you play games with. You cannot preach it. When I'm coming to preach you, some things I'm going to tell you, I've experienced it practically. Practically. Some people have come to tell me their story. Some I read it in the Bible. Some I read it from people's biography. Somebody has lived a life, he's ending, write a life story and tell us this place and this place. This is what I got it wrong. It's a serious institution. No. In fact, let me tell you something. There are all kinds of relationships. I have a relationship with my father, my mother. I, have a relationship, I, I, don't, I didn't have much relationship with my dad. But I have a relationship with cousins and brothers and sisters. But there is no relationship that can be tested than the marriage relationship. No other one. Listen, don't ever compare your marriage with your relationship with your father. In Africa, our own is more complicated. More complicated. I'll teach you why. More complicated. If I live in Germany, eh? <laughs> uh, all the language they speak is German. So the language is one. And one language makes people have a certain kind of behavior. Our languages are many. Are you ready for me? Yes, sir. I'm going to say things that if you don't get blessed, you get offended, but who cares? No. Yeah. I told God, I have decided to be a boy, and I'm still becoming a boy. I don't want to be a man. No. I quoted something to you that you can age and not grow. So I'm started practicing it. My father, Reverend Biakofi, prophesied my next 50 years. I was in America. The Lord said, you can't continue to be dressed like an old man. I've changed my dress. So if you are offended about what I'm wearing, it does not change what I'm preaching. Okay? There is a man of God in, in Singapore called Joseph Prince. And the way he dressed around, I thought that this small boy 
and I saw that he's crossed 50 years. It took me a long time. I, I was shocked when I saw that Joel Austin is 55. Sometimes he wear um, trust you to come and preach. Oh, they are she said, Kabasa. Consonance is a cabasa, not for them. What are you who say you are an Israelite? If somebody is not laughing, he's offended, but I don't care. I have been preaching this gospel for some time now. I'm not a boy again for I mean, I'm, nobody can decide for me. Papa Isu called me and said, Boy, I saw your dress. Charlie. I said, I did. Last year, that was last week. Now, listen, I told Mommy Tenta, when I told them I've changed, Mommy used to ask me, America, what? How, the way you keep saying you are going to change your dress, how are you going to change it? Now you've seen it. I have changed. Yesterday, there was a police commander who has come here because the old one has been transferred. He came to greet me and then we were talking. When he came, I saw him taking acid at him straight. Ah, of course, I'm anti Ah, now, it's a boy, no, 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 I saw my daughter on the Bruni stand up. I look at this. I say, girl, you are looking good. That is her. Those days, I know she said some wiggy be wuna. His classmate is Auntie Sarah. So I watch this. I observe people. Look at Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer is going to 75. If you see Auntie Joyce standing preaching. Open away your house out in the name of No, we both will be a make up and grow for you when you be a boat in Possum and Sabaku to have a good job. One and Waro. Pegay, you are worried. One idea, see the trees when they wake. When they left, it's original. No one shall. So, we're saying that all that's a job. No man is on the bus and is a course. I know me know. I saw where we are. No. I cannot change you until I change your thinking. It's absolutely impossible. As a man think in his heart, so easy. I was in America. Last three weeks there about. I was trying to buy some things. An old lady. A brewapa. It is so white. Took a dress and came to me. I was minding my business. Oh, are you from Africa? I say yes. Are you visiting? I say yes, I'm visiting. You, you guys, you guys know you married, okay? Well, I have it. What do you think about this dress? I said, oh, ma'am, uh, where did you pick it from? He said, well, I said, well, the, the blue is fine, but you know, woman color is pink. Can't you pink the pink one? I was confused about it. Your wife must be a blessed woman. Thank you for the pink one. Now, dear. I said, Mom, if you are not offended, can I please ask you, how old are you? Oh, you know, my son, I'm going to be 89 years. I am a young man recording me in the convention of my mature. You are just 63. That's an out here. 63. All those who travel to Abuja ask them, you go to the mall, you see these old ladies. All oh, our old ladies are wearing some things. And one should dress in a certain way. Obia, because I've been before. The brochure mirror. Nobody tells them they are witches. They don't appear like. Look at the Queen of England. Ninety years. I don't know whether it's ninety or it's almost ninety. Eh? Ninety-five. Ninety plus. Queen of England. What does she say? Hi. If, in, if you are a grandmother, you are somebody's husband. Don't ask a woman. Ask a woman. The the anointing God put to me, it to confront you 
and change your thinking. And if you are not ready, you run away. I cannot change you as a man thinking in his heart. Unless I change your thinking, I cannot change you. This is what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change your thinking so that your home will be peaceful. Amen. There is a way you are going. Paul said that be not conformed to this way, but be it transformed. It means that the way you think yesterday, don't think the same way today. Be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your thinking. And once your thinking is changed, your attitude will change. And once your attitude will change, your actions will change. And once your actions will change, your habit will change. And once your habit changes, your destiny will change. It moves from that angle. It goes that way. So once you start changing the person thinking, you see that his attitude has changed. I meet people in America, I told me, say, you, you have changed my matrimonial home. Yes, sir. I said, I didn't change it. The word you took and practice has changed it. Amen. Once you take God out of the equation, you are heading towards a crash. Yeah. Once you take God out of any equation, you are heading towards a crash. Mm-hmm. So if God is not in the marriage equation, Higher. You will not enjoy, you will endure. God didn't make marriage for, end, uh, uh, for endurement. No. And the curses they put on it. Thank God we don't say those things here. I don't know who joined them together. I said I was in a meeting. I have to run from one meeting to the other. But have you noticed that in our marriage we don't say for better, for worse? Yeah. Do you know why we don't say that? I'm not against whatever anybody is saying anywhere. But God he didn't make marriage for better and for worse. No. Number two, there are people that say that the Lord give and the Lord take. It was said by a frustrated man, Job, whose faith is being tested. God is not a giver and a taker. What is the use of giving it to you and coming to taking it back? God doesn't give and take. Job did not know that in the spirit realm, it is the devil that has come to attack him. God permitted the devil to attack Job because God saw the devil property with Job and that property is called fear. Mm. Mm. That is another dimension. That's where I'm going. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Huh? Come alive. Come alive with me. It's a very serious institution. Don't take it for granted. Don't think divorce is the solution. Because if you divorce, you can marry again. There are divorces you are not in control. There are people who have divorced and there's no good if you're a woman, a man says doesn't love you again, and you walk out and, and, and probably divorce you. Marry again. But I am not talking about running away from marriage because of minor, minor things. There is a biblical context for divorce. I tell some of my sons and daughters, if, if the divorce will happen, don't let it come from you. Let it come from the one that doesn't fear God. So listen, we are moving from First class to master's degree class. He said, he said, it's too much giving you milk. Now I want you to break bones. It means that there are certain messages you can only preach to people who are mature. We cannot continue to give you milk. We we cannot continue to come to church and tell you an answer story. The greatest attack Head has launched on this generation is the home. Marriage, home, family. The greatest attack hell has launched on this generation. Marriage, home, family. That is what I told you last week that the state of the family determines the state of the church. Because God in his original plan didn't start a church, he started a family. And so the family is more important to God than the church. And so if you have a strong family, you have a strong church. Hear this very carefully. Now, watch this. The family become a small church at home. That is why the hierarchy is that the head of the, of the woman is the man. The head of the man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. So Jesus said, come to church. Prophet Anna will be there to pastor you. But in your home, be a pastor of your family. As a father, be a pastor of the family and come back under the shepherd of this one. So the family become a small cell that come together to form the church. So the state of the church is determined by the state of the cell. So if you have confused, frustrated families, it cannot be different from the state of the church. 
How will I give a woman who comes to church an assignment to do something for Christ whose husband is beating her? The best in her cannot come out. How would you tell a dickhead whose wife has denied her sex for three months? How do you tell her to him to go for evangelism? No, you are not ready for me, but I'm going to give it to you. And then I, I, I'm here. I'm going to give to you. Go. This is it. There are many people in church. Also, I'm telling you, as I'm preaching, some people they are off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when they, they will sit and you could see they are looking at you, but they are here, but they are not here. They are looking at you, but when you ask them, what did that teacher say? They say, ah, 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 ah. because you can be here and tune off. And the reason you have tuned off is that you are not sound. Sound mind is a gift from God. He said, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he gave you the spirit of power. He gave you the spirit of love. He gave you the spirit of sound mind. Listen, even if you marry the devil, you can correct it. Once God tells you something, you do it. <laughs> I, 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 I made a statement that I said that if you do what God said, you see how cheap the devil is. It's a good one to write it down. If you do what God said, you see how cheap the devil is. And the reason why the devil has become strong on us is that we are not doing what God has said. Amen. And when we start it in the natural, then it takes it into the spirit. Have you noticed also for sometimes I call people and the prophecy I give to them is that if you want your wife to carry a seed for you, yes, make her happy. Yes, and all those that change, the woman took seed. That means that there is a way a, a man can treat his wife and the wife's womb will reject her seed. Because you see, once you release the spermatosia, it begins to go to the woman and look for an egg. What if the woman is not ready to release the egg? You want to ask the doctor to have no egg? When God was saying the egg, where is yours? <laughs> is God a is God a passier God? No, something went wrong. The devil took advantage of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me show you how powerful. Let me show you something. <clears throat> Today, God told me something when I wake up down to pray. He said, Satan hates anything I God give it attention. Mm. Let me go to the people here because you are not ready. The way Vicky is looking at my face, you can see that it's not ready. Do you understand? When God loves you and gives you attention, you attract her. He detests and hates anything. A dear pia in a couple of dog on open some a buffus at them. So one of the things that the devil kept listen, listen to how powerful this is started in the garden of it. Don't take it light. I'm not going to take you to a primary school. Yes, we have entered the university level. Yes, now hear this. Do you know that Adam was not a match? The devil never gave Adam attention until Eve appeared. When Adam was in the garden, Satan never show up. Because where there's productivity, Satan gets an attention. He gives that place an attention. So the marriage you have married, whether you believe it or not, the day you walk to the altar, you have an adversary. This is why I don't want to hear that, but that is the point. If you enter the military, you make vows and do all kinds of things. One of the vows of the army is that you don't, you don't own your life again. Yes, sir. One of the armies, one of my friend military uh, guy in America has told me that you sign a bond that you can die at any time. Mm. We will even tell your wife, all the military people, they, they program them for that. Mm. Get ready because this man you have married, you can lose him at any time. Because you are standing to fight for the country. Mm. Right now, Talibans are bombing some of the soldiers in America. Mm. Some of them, they've went there, they didn't die last minute. They are killing them. And it's not the news. Because by the time you are, you are married, a soldier mind, the person that you already know. Yeah. We have already told you. So by the time you are entering into the marriage, you know that there is an enemy. And it didn't start from your time. It started from the Garden of Eden. So, the way we say pray, the way we say come to church, and you think as if you are doing somebody a favor for getting closer to God, you are making a mistake. It is not for jokes. It's not an experiment. It's not for boys and girls. No, it's for serious people who understand the biblical principle. 
Wow. 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 No matter how you take your time to study, if you like, go to, even to school. I'm coming to marry this lady called Vicky. Go to school and study about her. Go and get a professor to teach you how Vicky was born, the way you like. After you still marry, you can study her for 10 years. When, after you, you marry her, you still see syllables. <laughs> you will learn more lessons that after all these degrees I got, mm. why are all these new lessons coming? <laughs> Progressive learning. You know, that is why there are things men do uh, and it makes sense. Boom. You went to school. When you go to school from level 100 out to level 400, depends on the course you do, there's a day that they do what is called graduation. Is that correct? They give you a gown to wear. If it's doctorate or anything, they give you a certificate so that you have passed. Now, because we don't graduate from marriage, they give you the certificate before you start. <laughs> now, the, yesterday, they didn't give you a certificate. Where is it? It's in the house. Keep it. So, our arena wa komunu. Let me show you where the certificate is coming from. God said, I hate divorce. So you hate divorce means that no graduation. It means that you have a certificate in a man. That is why they say it in a vow that till death do you apart. And so your man certificate in a son was starting. It means that these people, there is no graduation date. No, it's there. We cannot say because others has fall into a rock and hit their head. We cannot tell about the truth. No. If we don't preach the truth, many people go in. I've already told. There's a contest in the Bible. The Bible, the divorce is in the Bible. The Bible talks about, for instance, if, you, if your wife commits adultery, Jesus said you can divorce her. He also said that if you love her, you can keep her. You are in a certain level, you love her, you can keep her. <laughs> but if you think you cannot handle because this is the state of your mind or whatever, you are said you can divorce her. They are different things. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Threats. There was a story recently. Somebody told uh, somebody's, uh, uh, his brother, and if I don't kill your sister, then I'm not called. And he killed her. Yeah. Yeah. So once those threats come, we have to bring the money to the state of separation. I'll teach you all those things from tomorrow. There's a place we separate you and then we believe God that one person's mind will change. Because we have seen marriages that are separated. And when they go through transformation, they came back together. It was better. Yes, sir. Now, where the devil has come into the house, if you don't separate, murder will come in. Because until the demons are cast out, they will manifest themselves. Wow. I'm teaching. Wow. That one is for tomorrow going. That's not for today. We are, we are going to take it to another day. We will deal with all those things. But your own has not come there. Who didn't know, Okra? It's not there. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you are a young person, you are sleeping, you have already failed. Already. Oh, waka. Hallelujah. Oh, they won't come cry. Let me give you some things to write down. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Marriage is first instituted by God. So, who was the first person to institute marriage? A man will leave his father and mother and be cleaved to his wife, and the two shall be one. I said some things during the all night and so there is no need for me to go back and repeat them i told you that uh, there is godly soul tie. there's ungodly soul tie. i told you that godly soul tie. so tight there's no the, the, the only thing you have heard is ungodly soul tie, which we've dealt with yes friday i keep telling mommy that i couldn't push this thing to where i wanted you to go and the lord told me there's no problem with you go back and continue yes, yeah i'm telling you yesterday i received mails yes, from young people one of them sent me mail 17 years Addicted to all kinds of things. I'm telling you. He says something left me. Amen. I mean, I, 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 some of them wrote to me, say, Papa, do youth program. Because the youth, we are suffering. Are you people suffering? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Have you heard them? They are suffering. They are seriously suffering. I mean, that's why when I come to church, we have to make this thing, maybe a confession. That when you come to church, you have to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, sister, how are you doing? How's your money? But please, uh, I know I'm looking good. And thank God for my hair, but don't be deceived by my hair. I have issues. So pray for me. If you have, if I have forgotten to make the confession, make it before we continue. Tell your neighbor that don't, 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 don't be deceived by my hair and don't be deceived by my lipstick. Tell the person, you better pray for me because I have issues.
No, that's what sometimes we need a prophetic anointing to go inside because there are people there. The way they are dressed and the way they walk, they don't appear like they have a problem. Hey! There are some words of knowledge you say, Nyami repeating it five times before I say it. I was in America, the Lord told me, I was doing an invasion, the Lord said, call somebody here. I said, no, Lord, America, America, nobody has that kind of problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God said it four times. The fifth one. And the reason why I said is, if you don't say it, anything happened to her, I will hold you responsible. When I said it, look, look at the way I was trying to polish the word of knowledge. There is somebody here that your husband is really, I've forgotten what it is, I said. Your, there is some serious issue, but for the sake of people not to talk about it, see me after church, you say, I'm here. <laughs> and the lady said, this is the reason I came here. Crying, deliverance was taking place, heavy bitterness. Your wig is deceiving people. Ah. No wig, your lipstick. This time, God, they said lipstick in body, but I hear the lipstick company is collapsing because, because of face mark, no lipsticks. Oka yeah. and after church, you be okay. Amen. It was instituted by God. Are you following me? Huh? Huh? I told you one of the greatest battles everyone is fighting now in our generation is the battle. For what? Number one, marriage. The battle for the marriage and the family. That is one of the greatest battles we are fighting. You have never given it attention. Also, we are trying to lay hands on people and try to let them get impartation, but they are confused. People have unanswered questions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? 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 Uh, let me tell you this. Huh? V, are you married? Let me tell you one thing marriage you do. Marriage will expose and reveal who you really are. Nothing will expose and reveal you. You can pretend to your boss, you can pretend before your pastor. But you cannot pretend before somebody you have lay in the room for five years. If you snore, we'll know. If you weary on the bed, we'll know. If you are a food we will know. If you don't bath, oh, okay, let me not go there. Hallelujah. No. Marriage will reveal the, the, the fact that there are a lot of noise with a lot of people knows what I'm talking about. If you don't like bathing, we will know. Nothing reveals who you are. So it's a serious business. In Africa, somebody live in Wale Wale. You live in Cape Coast. Different upbringing. Different environment. Different culture. Different, if you permit me to say, way of dressing. Different beliefs. They may be, hey, listen, the father, somebody is a Christian, and somebody believes what you believe. Do you know there are Christians who don't believe in prosperity? That is why they attack Christians who have prospered. It means that they are born again, they are going to heaven, but Satan has planted poverty mentality. Now you can go and marry a man who doesn't believe in prosperity. You can marry a man who doesn't believe in women looking good. So your dressing can bring friction. We are going to deal with all that. No. You can marry what is the psychopedia. Call it atetequa. It's in the tree psychopedia. You, it, don't, don't challenge me. Which kind of psychopedia I've told you. You can marry somebody like that. His mind is not renewed. I know pastors eh, who, who is pastoring according to their wealth. Their wealth. If you are a pastor. And you see women well in trousers and you are angry. The reason you are angry is that your, your pastoral culture is about your environment. So to you, God is a pram pram God. You don't know that you get to a place like Scotland and what men were scared. And because you are, so are you telling me that if God is going to look at somebody's dress and take the person to hell, then how will a Scotland man go to heaven? Because your world, men don't wear skirt. But another world, men wear skirt. So, 
if you start preaching and you start traveling, then you see that God is bigger than your mind. And God sees what you don't see. So all this thing is that you marry somebody come from uh, uh, Beje and you marry the person who also come from Asante Bekwai. And the two of you come together. Different language. Oh, there's another one that's a problem. Different upbringing of the kind of food they eat. So the Benko and the Fetid that you know how to do it, the man doesn't like it. It's a sin. That's why I say that. There's no place that what is inside you will reveal than the marriage home. When you marry what is inside you, who you really are will come out. You can't hide your weakness from your wife. No, you can't hide your weakness from your husband. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Don't ever marry people to think that, that Douglas has married, but he's going to think that this girl is, is a perfect girl. No. Hmm? Some of you, eh? I read in America that, uh, America has a statistic that when there is a pastor in America, about 50% of the women in the church marry or married with the, the man is their husband. It's very interesting because they only know the pastor from the pulpit. Some of you, all you know me is this life. Apart from meeting me here, eh, even uh, uh, the way I've changed, I've dressed in a certain way before you are. When I, when, when, when I, somebody, a pastor friend called me and said that last week when I was watching, when you appeared, so that your children were confused. I said, that's their own problem. <laughs> and I saw that because you have just said so change is not easy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the most difficult thing that you have got to apply in this preaching and this week is that it will demand change. Amen. And change is not easy. Can I say that again? Change is not easy. Change is not what? It's not. And I say because the reason why they do that is because you only see the man from the pulpit. Douglas has always no part from the church anchor. Now you are going to stay together at home. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes they will be oversalt in a soup. And the oversalt is not because he is wicked. He was trying to please you. How do you address that situation? How do you address a food that is salty? Are you going to get offended? I gave you a story about two people that married and went for honeymoon. They were all in the same hotel. Room 205, room 202. All of them in a honeymoon. They were going for dinner. The room 205 took his husband. You know when you marry, honey, what are you going to wear? You are late. Say, I'm trying to talk to my boss. And honey, can you marry man? Can you iron my trousers for me? And it was a Kimprin trousers. Another way for Kimprin is Mitrija. And the girl put the iron on the highest regulator. Landed it on the trousers. And you guess what happened? If you don't want Kimprin, there are dresses. I mean, gabardine. There are dresses that you can't use hot iron. You see what uh, 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 Marina is wearing? This one. I don't know what it is. Is it certain they call it? Eh? Do you know that if you put a whole iron in certain, you can burn it? So let me give you an example. And then you put it on it and bent it. And it's the guy's favorite trousers. Immediately, first day of marriage, the fire started. What is this? You have burned my trousers. What is this? Huh? What kind of thing is that? You don't you know that this trousers, he doesn't like hot, hot iron. Look at what you have done. First day, you have burned trousers. One day, one try, one year. How many trousers will you burn? Immediately, there was a calculation. There was an estimation. There was a, a, a algebra. There was art mass. All of them were involved. Oh, man. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, you are not laughing. Or you are laughing. No! Burnt it! If anybody didn't laugh, it's a suspect. One day, one day. And then the, the girls, I didn't have my son that uh, 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 it was an accident. What kind of accident is that? First the accident, one year, how many accidents will you cause? So the calculations keep going on. The dinner was a mess. They were not enjoying the drinks. Everybody could see that their faces and you, you, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, feeling his voice. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. 
And so, when you, you, you don't need to meet people for them to talk to know they have problem. The question is, did they bring the trousers back? The trousers and the peace in the matrimonial, which one is important? This is what I tell you, I don't think you know. Don't deceive yourself to think you know. One day God gave me a prayer point. I was in waiting, the Lord came and said, let me give you a prayer point. And I said, yeah, I'm ready. Took a pen and paper. I always have a pen and paper in my prayer room. I have a fire. As God is speaking, I pause and I write. And he says, son, pray that I will teach you. This is the way God put it. He said, there is always a better way of doing things. Pray that I will teach you the better way of doing things. It means that the way I marry my wife, there's always a better way of marrying her. But only God can teach me. I can do all things through Christ. Now listen. There is a statement Jesus said that caught my attention. He said, without me, you can do what? Nothing. How many means nothing? Nothing means what? Nothing. Does it include marriage? Watch it. So God told me, even the way you are building portals, the way you are church pastoring, the way you are doing your revival program, pray that I will teach you the better way of doing things. Room 205. They are also getting ready to go for dinner. The husband, the wife, the husband said, my, my boss, I should do something for her. Honey, please, we, have, we don't have to be late too. And then, it, all the petty names are started, sugar, honey. And he said, can you iron my trousers for me? Certain trousers. Also increase the iron. Now, look at it. It means that women are the same. Put it on the hot trousers and bend it. Oh, honey, I've bent your trousers. The guy comes, oh, really? Let me see. I thank God my leg was not inside. <laughs> I'll get another trousers, I'll wear it, and then let's go. What's this? He said, honey, thank God my leg was not inside. Because once you have not bent my leg, I'll get the trousers to wear. The same problem, but different. This is the difference between champions and failures. This is the difference. So don't ever think, and that, don't, don't, don't make a mistake. The fact that you are doctor in book, doctor in law, that's not mean you are doctor in marriage. It's a difference I have to teach you from the biblical line. Same problem. Same problem. The, the, what you are seeing that you say you are angry and you are going out, other people are facing it. What you see, one day I asked the Lord, why do you hate divorce? He said, because when you leave Vicky and you go and take Ruth, you will, say, you will face the same problem you face with Vicky with Ruth. So instead of running away, stay and deal with it. Yeah. What God hates is to, is to run away from problems. God hates you turning back. God doesn't want us to look back. Even in the realms of the spirit, eh, he was giving us armor for our spiritual battles and warfare. He gave us helmet of salvation. He gave us breastplate of righteousness. He gave us our future with the preparation of the gospel. All the armors, there is nothing for your back. This is the enemy. The enemy holding his sword. You are standing. God said, every protection is here. The enemy sword is in his hand. He has pointed the sword. So for years. He said, when you turn your back, there is no defense. So, one day, I was watching a movie about Jackie Chan. They shot him, pa 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 said, hey, they've killed the guy. Jackie Chan was lying down, as if he was dead. When the people turned, he took his gun and opened fire, pa 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 And his girlfriend that they've captured, they can say, Jackie, what happened? And he stripped his shirt, and he said, he showed me, he said, I'm wearing bulletproof. So, it's not that the bullet doesn't have power. There is something that will not let the bullet touch his body. And that is why the people did not know. The people did not know that the guy is wearing a bulletproof. You see, there are some armors you wear. That is why the devil's arrow couldn't penetrate you. He told God, have you not make a hedge? It means that there are some things that happen in the spirit. There is something about you that the devil cannot explain. Because some of you, Satan has tried to kill you for a long time. Now he has even given up. Because he cannot explain why you are unkillable. 
And the reason is because you are, oh Jesus, I feel like preaching this thing. You are standing in a certain way, a certain platform, a certain protesting and defense. But the day you turn your back, there is nothing God can do. You have given yourself up. So don't come and think that you know we are going to talk about serious things this week. Now, watch this. <laughs> How many points have I given to you now? Huh? <laughs> How many points? In marriage, two people enter into covenant with each other and with God. Can I say that again? In marriage, Two people enter it into covenant with what? Each other. And with what? Talk to me. Now, Douglas, stand up. Uh, uh, Pat, stand up. Yesterday, they came to tie the knot. These two people enter into covenant. But I told you that whatever marriage is there, God shows up. Let me show you something. I have to give me the ball and give me a marker. Watch this. It can only be described in what I call in mathematics triangular uh, what do we call it um, movement bring it to the middle here so that they can see can't I write, I have to write on the, what is this okay put this one there uh-huh. put this one there, so this is my turn is like this I want it on the vertical way thank you, so praise God, are you watching me this is marriage those of you here, can you see Okay, you watch it here. Huh? If we bring it back, can they see? So bring it back. Eh, we don't even know what we are trying to do. It's right and right. Keep quiet. Where is it? I used to teach us a national service personnel. So this is marriage. If it's going to work, it's in a form of triangle. Why? Because a threefold cord is not easily broken. So a threefold cord means a cord that are coming together. This is a threefold cord. No? My, my triangle is not too accurate. My infant is a, which means a chair. Now, Sana I want a chair this week in a couple of and I treat you. This is how it works. Man, woman, God. So, two people, oh, sit down, guys. Two people coming together with God. That is why it's a covenant. The Bible said threefold God is not usually broken. So, this line here. Eh? is what the man brought this line is what the woman brought and two of them decided to join together so marriage is two people who love God coming together to love one another can I say that again a successful marriage in the context of the Bible that will work are two people who already love God that is why girl, I have a problem you dragging a drunkard to bring it to me to marry you. I can do it for you, but I can't guarantee your future. Watch this. The reason the man and the woman are down and God is up is that both of them, as long as they are on the marriage journey, must continually look into him. Now, he's up there, the man here on the bed, the man is lying on the right, the woman is lying on the left, and both of them must lift their eyes to the God who is at the apex. And lift their eyes and look to him. Now, if they cut off from looking at this God, there is no marriage. So the first problem that comes from the marriage is not because your wife is not giving you sex 
or he's disrespectful, or your husband is a womanizer, one party has cut off from God. Or both parties. So, as long as I love God, your mother is safe. Hear this. It's not because all the evil things are not in me. It's not because I can't be a womanizer. That's the generation I come from. It's not because I can't be a drunkard. This is my family. It's not because I can't chase other women. I'm a man. The reason I don't do some things is that I'm looking to one direction. And the direction I'm looking to stop me from doing some other things. Because this is why serving God is not easy. You don't serve God in your terms. You serve God in God's terms. Oh my. We don't serve God in our terms. That means that the day you become a Christian, you cannot sit there and say, I want to do anything I like. No. There are commandments. There are principles. There are rules. There are laws. There are rules of engagement. So you come back. And as long as, so most of the marriage that is not working, that we are going to deal with. So these two people, as long as they come to church, as long as Douglas loves God, as long as Douglas is praying, as long as Douglas is fasting, as long as Pat is also doing it, they are going to live sound. The friction comes when one person started withdrawing. God is not an obligation to protect anybody who does not love him. The foundation of the Lord standeth sure. It has a sea. The Lord knows them that are his. So, Jesus said, my sheep know me and they hear my voice. A stranger will never pick my voice. So, once you become a sheep, you will naturally pick the voice. Now, listen, you will not struggle even if you don't see the number. If you don't see the number. Sometimes I call people, some of my phones, it appears private. It means I appear no caller ID. But the moment I talk, hello, he said, that is you. Why? Because they know my voice. If you are far away and you see me preaching on the radio, without seeing me on my face, you can tell that this is my father preaching. So, if you live with a woman, you discern his voice. If you live with a man, you will know his voice. So, once you walk with God, you know God's voice. The way you say you don't know God's voice, it's a problem because you are not walking with God. So once this thing is broken, it's not going to work. This line must all be there. What is the purpose of this particular line and this people up? They have to look to him for sustenance. They have to look to him for preservation. They have to look to him. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So this is a three-four call. We'll go into details about this triangle so that I can go to another other points and then be able to close early for you to go and sleep. So get. Okay? That boyfriend, boyfriend, it's a serious business. Oh. No, you don't understand it. It's a serious business. In fact, there's, there's a quote I'm going to quote that you won't like, but I'll tell you. It is better not to marry than going to marriage and have a crisis. Because that one can put you in asylum. It can put you in a psychiatric hospital. I went to the psychiatric asylum down and went to the mental health hospital. And the doctor there told me many years ago, he said, he prophet, 85% of the women here with a mental problem is about marriage issue. Nervous breakdown. They've lost their mind. Some of them are talking. Some of them, all of them. Before the marriage was coming on, or before the marriage, they were sound. They were going about their business. They were cool until they married a caricature. And let me tell you something. <laughs> There are two ladies here. Mm? All of them are ladies. They come to church. There is something this one can stand. This one cannot stand. Yeah. What this one will survive can kill this one. So don't think because somebody divorced and is walking around, you can also run away. Yeah. There are people based on their situation, yeah. God give them grace to handle things. Yeah. But in your situation, it may be that in the context of the way you handle it, God decided not to give you grace. Yeah. Give me one reason why you are not clapping for such a word that Holy Ghost is giving you. Can we keep up going? So don't forget this diagram. We'll talk about it. Huh? So let's come and take it so that it doesn't describe them. Man, woman, God. 
Threefold cord is not easy broken. We'll talk about that. There'll be more diagrams. Don't take the don't take the board away. Stand it there. When I need it, I'll call you so that you bring it. Amen. Huh? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. That's also oh, wait. Philippians, let me, let me add Philippians 4:13 to it. Philippians 4:13. Put it on the board. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Hallelujah. Amen. What it is? Everybody, look at the board and read it. Ready, go. If you are not proud, open your mouth and read it. Can we read that again and the loudest you can? New Living Translation. Wow. For I can do how many things? Does it include marriage? Some of you can take it back. I can do, I can do what? Through who? Who does what? So, the people that are surviving in rough waters are the people God has given strength. <laughs> Give me the message Bible and then I'll move to another point. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Wow. I can make it through anything. Good, bad, and ugly. I can make it through it. Through the one. And if you are not connected to that one, let me make that point very strong. All things. That is why from tomorrow I'm going to show you that you can only love by faith. Love is not a failing. And I'm going to also mess your theology and let you know that marriage cannot only be based on love. It has to be based on sacrifice. If you try to substitute sacrifice by love, you will run away. Because where you have to sacrifice, love doesn't come to the equation. Where you have to sacrifice, if only you are living by your failing, you run away. Getting to the last minute when Jesus was about to die, he almost was redrawing. He said, let this car bypass me. The Hebrew writer said, who in the time of his flesh, he feared. That one is for tomorrow. It's going to be a very strong one. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yes. Huh? Yes. So, because most of the things you call love, 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 it's a different definition in your own context of understanding. No? So I can do all things through Christ, who does what? Who strengthens me? That means that I can marry well through Jesus, who is in the equation of the marriage. Say amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I wrote something here. As the married partners grow closer to God, they actually grow closer to each other. As the two people who are married grow, they grow closer to God. Oh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> so, Douglas, once you and Pat, as the married partners grow closer to God, the, 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 the price to get closer to God will naturally cause them to grow closer to each other. So, if you see marriage that is going on the opposite direction, they are not getting closer to God. I find it naturally that the more I fast and pray, the more I don't struggle to love my wife. And the more I get undivided attention towards her, I naturally struggle. There are things that, I'm telling you, once the couple grow closer to God, eh, they will naturally, once they are growing, do you remember the quote? Hallelujah. Somebody say grow. Look at somebody say grow. There's a scripture in the book of Psalms. He said, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he will appear in his glory. So God's greatest desire is to build you. Amen. And once you are built, you will appear in your glory. Amen. So when the two of you are growing, what, now the, the key word is grow. What makes us grow? They come to church. They fast. They pray. There's a saying that the people that pray together, they live together. So show me a marriage that is heaven on earth. They are praying together. What it is? They spend time in the presence of God. They worship. They give. They serve in the kingdom. 
they have one mind towards God and above all, whatever material thing they are gathering on earth does not affect their relationship with Christ. Amen. Let me tell you something. Where I am, there is nothing material that will reduce my love for God. It means that you cannot trap me with material things to get me out of God's way. It can be the money of the whole world. Because I have a revelation that what will profit a man if he gains the world? And that's what? What does he do? Lose what? Gain it from where? And lose it to who? So you can gain the world and do what? And lose your soul. Family life. So do you want the, do you want the thing to work? Do you want the marriage to work? Grow closer to God. Draw closer to God. The influences are not good. The advices are not good. And they start affecting. So if you naturally grow closer to God, you grow closer to each other. And that's what it is. That means that it is not a kind of marriage that the husband is in church, the wife is at home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The wife is in church, the husband is at home. Once you build your relationship, that is why Jesus said that the commandments, all that are ten. The first five is your, your responsibility. Thou shalt not make any other gods beside me. That is between you and God. So he said, let me summarize it for you. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy might. He said, once you do that, then the other one said, thou shalt not take thy neighbor's wife. Then you can love your neighbor as yourself. So anybody that doesn't love God will find it difficult to love his neighbor. Now listen, every love that is not first towards God and is trying to get towards you eh, has an ulterior motive. That love is looking for something. It's not free. No. So if a man doesn't love God and buy you cars and, 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 and shattering you and, 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 and pumping things on your hand and you think that you are coming to church to share a testimony, you are under trap. No? No? There are people you meet when they love God, they say they are doing something for you. They are doing it based on their understanding of the scriptures. I'm preaching. Are you getting it? So this week, make it a point to come. I'm just hitting the points, but this what these are the things. Simple. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the ten commandments of a happy marriage. Bam, 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 bam. Maybe two, ten commandments, and you are going to paste it by your wall. Who break it back? Who No, don't, don't, don't be deceived by. It. Let me tell you something. This is the bottom line. The marriage is not made to endure. That's why I say it's not for better and for worse. It's for better, brighter, until you arrive at the best. Can I say that again? It's for better, brighter, until you arrive at where? The best. Is somebody learning something here today? <laughs> well, God's will for every man and woman is that Christ will be forming them. So once you start growing, Christ will be forming you. Philippians 4.19 God's will for every man and woman is that Christ will be formed in every one of us. Look at your neighbor and say, God's will for you is that Christ will be formed in you. So, the reason we keep coming to church, the reason you became born again, God didn't take you to heaven is that God wants to develop you so that you can develop others. God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. God wants to deliver you so that you can be a contact for others' deliverance. God wants to save you so that three others can be saved. The, now, now, God's, 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 God's will for every one of us is that Christ will be forming us, but my God, no, 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 my little children in whom I travel in birth till Christ be forming you. Galatians 4 19, eh? sorry, did I say Philippians? Oh, sorry, Galatians. I don't know why I quoted Philippians. Eh? Vicky, can you see that on my nose? I've written Galatians here. Can you see it? Eh? It's part of the friction, it's part of the problems. Hallelujah. My little children in whom I travel in birth again until Christ be forming you. So Paul was telling the Galatian church is that I pray for you until there was a formation of Christ. So when you marry, you should be able to pray for your partner until Christ be formed. Yeah. 
Don't be quick to run away. I saw bomb by many panat to say you should be for money. So God's will for everyone is that Christ will be forming you. Can't say the Philippians are right, Galatia. My little children with whom I travel in birth till Christ be forming you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody here who want to fail? So everybody wants to be successful. Is that right? Are you getting a point? You see, all the things I'm preaching here, it's not a preaching. No. I will only be discouraged when you don't practice what I'm preaching. Jesus said, when you, when you are a hearer of the word and you are not a doer of the word, you deceive yourself. Amen. Tell your neighbor, Christ must be forming you. A successful Christian marriage, is it successful or successful? It depends on the school you attended. It's not a problem. Successful and successful. Which one is the right pronunciation? Yo. Hmm. Hi, D. I ask you a question. I say, successful and successful. Successful. That is the correct one. That means Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Successful. Oh, sorry. Successful Christian marriage. Ten years. It means that not all Christian marriages are successful. But successful Christian marriage. And now, men down must be happen. Successful Christian marriage. Can I repeat that again? Successful Christian marriage is made up of successful Christian individual who decided to get married. So you cannot have a successful Christian marriage unless you are a successful Christian. That doesn't mean making money. That means that in your Christian work, the formation of Christ is really active. It is really active in your life. Let me tell you something. And yesterday, I was driving with mommy. We were going for some assignment somewhere. And a number called me from yesterday. Call, 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 call. And me, I'm not a telephonist. So it's not every call I pick. Particularly, it depends on the mood where I am. If I'm praying, if I'm praying, I don't pick the call. And the mommy said, please, can you pick the call? When I pick it, also micro because I was driving. And the person said, daddy, so, so, and so. And one of my potterian daughters started talking. And mommy said, you started talking about his husband's having an affair. The thing he said that broke me was that because of that I keep getting infections and what draw his attention was the message I preached on Friday about so tired and I'm talking about sometimes the man will go and take something and come and deposit it in you so he said I go to my hospital and the doctor told me this infection your husband pick it and give it to you He is a Christian, but he's not successful in holiness. Marriage is not a cure for lust. Marriage is not a cure for lust. If you have lust problem, break it before you get married. After marriage, it will be complicated. Marriage is not a cure for womanizing. Deal with that demon. Before you go and disturb somebody's daughter. Marriage is not a cure for infidelity. Deal with that spirit before you disturb somebody's son. So marriage is not a cure. Do you know something? Yesterday I picked something from the spiritual laboratory. Watch this. Marriage is not even a cure for things like uh, uh, after I marry. It is not God's concern that I won't get attracted to any man. It was not in God's equation. When Eve was created, there was, another, there was no woman competing with her. I'll come to that on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'll show you something. When Eve was made, there was no other woman. So, 
When you marry, you are like Eve and Adam in the garden. Wow. That one is not for today. It's another time. Most of the messages I've preached already in my spirit. So I'll show you that. That is what I told you. It's not an experimental thing that you are going to laboratory to go and experiment. It's not a cure. Take it serious. It can take you to heaven or it can take you to hell. Who you marry can be that you are on your way to heaven but you have diverted to hell. And who you marry can be that you are on your way to hell but you, can, you have diverted to heaven. You have to take it serious. It's very simple. Hallelujah. It's very, very simple. When you put two people together who are working in harmony with God, they will work in harmony with each other. If you put two people together who are working in harmony with God, they will naturally work in harmony with each other. If they both love God, they will naturally love each other. If you put two people together, the boy you are bringing that don't love God, I cannot promise the harmony in the future. Yes, sir. Yes. If you put two people together who are in harmony with God, they will naturally be in harmony with each other. Yes. That boyfriend you are bringing to marry to prove a point. No, I can promise that if, uh, uh, God forbid, but this marriage will work because always they are in church. They are always in church. If it doesn't work, then along the line, they divert us somewhere. But they are always in church. They are hearing the things I'm preaching. They are there. The church is there to correct it. There are people who look at me and say, if I didn't join this church, my marriage is broken. What happened? Because they heard something. And when they heard, they decided to practice it. And it helped them. Tell somebody, <laughs> ask somebody, are you married or you are not married? Demand an answer. Demand an answer. If they say yes. If they are not married, if they tell you no, tell them, uh, pray before you enter. It's a serious business. And tell them, I'm, I'm in it. Some, uh, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her that it's a serious business. No, it's not an experimental thing. <laughs> the way I would, the idea I would drink one and say, I would say give your, give your, uh, can, can you now kiss your bride? Uh, what? Kissing. About phone. Then you so near to a picture. No, yeah. Who your picture be a trouble? After you try me picture somewhere third March, I don't know which date, two, the year two thousand or something. Me nya picture be a bit. Nya kenyi na wakokuom. Na wa fa bejira ho. Oh, we didn't see. Do another one. Oh, we didn't have camera. Bejira ho. Do another. Na bejira ho. And as I say, I'm crossing for the kids. If you are near, because he entire you. I brought it. Oka brought it. No big kids. Obi, where they are saying it's not a news. By the end, you because if you see, I will have any kids for the first time. No, I don't know the second time that a mistake. That we have any kiss you for the first time. Oh, I am my preacher. Here. Ah, are they? What kind of ignorance is that, Daddy? If you look at me, do I look like somebody like that? No. No, but you know, hey, pass away to say you may kiss your brother. Hey, when I'm for me, hey, 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 hey. That is not marriage, oh. That is not marriage. Yeah. All, all the people that came to their wedding today, they've left. The way you borrow money to do reception for them, they are gone. <laughs> oh. oh, Jesus. <laughs> the way you borrow money to buy wedding gown, the people are... People have taken you picture. You know they are taking you picture, but the gun is not paid. <laughs> is it in the Bible that wedding gowns are white? <laughs> when I went to America, I saw that. I went to a shop and I saw a place, a corner, where there's a lot of suit to see those suit and wedding gowns. And I said, well, how much is, oh, this one, we don't buy it, we rent. I said, oh. Where did you I'm for? I'm for. 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 i am for 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 i
<laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that you can wear jeans and white shirt and go and marry. Can I say that again? You can wear jeans, white shirt. The important thing in the word, that when you go to wedding, there's only one important thing. I declare you husband and wife. Reception, photo, a dien dien. <laughs> it doesn't add up anything. Don't prepare for what they prepare for marriage. How do you prepare for marriage? It means that all the tapes I'm buying, because we don't preach it. Most churches don't even do family life program. We don't, it's not a concern. Some churches are not in their program. Some pastors have never preached it. They only invite marriage experts to come and preach it. They never. I'm too happy that I prophesy, cast out demons, preach, teach, direct you how to marry, and give you all the total counsel of God. Apostle, everything you need to become what you want to be, I give them to you. And it doesn't come by accident. This is the word of knowledge. I study, I live by it, I make sure it works, and I come and give it to you. are living in harmony with God, you can live in harmony with those in your family. It is, it's as simple as that. Once you are living in harmony with God, you can live in harmony with those in your family. If you are not so, listen, don't take for granted the relationship between you and God. Yeah. And don't, have them, don't come to church to satisfy your religious conscience. Every money that is making you proud, one day you will live it. Every car you have, one day you will live it. There is a place prosperity means nothing. I used to, I used to, my first BMW that somebody gave to me as a gift. I wake up and wax the car. I was living in Bowie. I was waxing agent. Inside. And today I'm going to. <laughs> One day mommy drove a car. I was there. He was buying fuel. And then he said, the car doesn't start. It was a Range Rover. He said, it doesn't start. I said, leave it and come. I sent somebody. I said, go and pick her for me. Leave her and come. Leave it. Set it and come at them. <laughs> I said, leave the car. They said, what happened to the car? I said, no, leave it, leave it. I'll call the range of people to come and pick it up. Leave it, leave it. I don't want you to stand there, crowd. Yeah. Leave it. He said, there's a realm you come to. What you are trying to die for today, it will mean nothing to you tomorrow. God will bless you so much that don't die premature. Don't let the material thing destroy you. No. I cannot be trapped by those things. No. Bless God. If you bless me with a car, I will take it, pray for you, ask God to give you more car, but I cannot be trapped by a car. No. It's not what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. So all the things that is making you feel like you have a right and money, listen, money is good, but let God give it to you. It means that let your prosperity be in the context of the biblical one. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. Those that love money will never be satisfied with it. We, we, the prosperity we are talking is not any other prosperity. We are talking about the kingdom one. The kingdom. You are not a cocaine dealer. You are not pushing drugs. You are not stealing. You are working and God is multiplying the little in your hand. And you are living what is called godliness with contentment. And the Bible says great gain. And you are also becoming a kingdom investor. It's not just you getting the money. But God is, the money you have is expanding his kingdom. Right? If you have never given an offering in this church, the chair you are sitting on, somebody gave. The screen you are watching, somebody gave. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It's a covenant. So don't be deceived by silver. Don't be deceived by silver. Get in harmony with God. Love God. Charles Pergen said that you may choose not to live, you may choose to live without Christ, but make sure you don't die without Christ. 
That's your choice. You can, you can, you can see. I don't, mean, I don't need you. But the day you are dying, if you don't have Christ, that is it. Yesterday I was watching a man called Sid Roth. He does a program called Supernatural. He has been doing it for over forty years, and he brought another man, great people who have had encounters in the supernatural, and he interviews them. And there was a man, thirty-five years ago, he went to hell, and also went to heaven. And he was talking about people he saw in hell, and he said that when he saw pastors in hell, he asked Jesus Christ. Why are these pastors in here? The angel that went to him said, Oh, they were doing it as a profession. They didn't have any relationship with me. They were doing it like the way you are working in a bank that they are paying you. They didn't have a relationship with me. No. So you can be in church, you don't have a relationship with Christ. But only Jesus doesn't know you. You know that Jesus doesn't know you. Say, Yes, you need more. Say, Long time. No, you can't have Christ. Nay, a temptation, and you may be for Muno. Uba be so good, you so out the tower, you don't want to try it again. But the way now you do it comfortably, something is wrong. The way I, oh, you do it comfortably, and then you just like, sit down and you do it. Right? This thing is a serious business. Oh. There is a heaven and there is hell. Yes, and the man was talking about the fact that when the demons causes people to go to hell, they are happy. He said, one of, and there's something called say one of the things the demon love is I saw the demons leave hell and come to the earth. And when they enter people, one of the things the demons love and celebrate is when they move them to commit immorality. I heard it. Said the rock. Yesterday I was watching it. Some boy drama was demons saying that. No, why are they happy? Say, because through the drama, you know, they can pump different things in there. So let me tell you again. Okay? Most of the things that affect our body, sickness, disease, infirmities, most of them came through sex. The corporal said that everything you commit is outside your body. But when you sin by fornication, you hate your own body. So when you are having sex outside the marriage covenant, you hate yourself. That means that somebody can give you cancer through sex. It will not come through spermatosia, it comes by the spirit. As a result of the sex, other demons came and they came with the demon of cancer. Wow. Wow. We would deal with that dimension. That is where deliverance is very important. That the devil is succeeding in using. And the man said something. There are pastors who preach messages to discourage the right one God has called. It means that when I'm commanding demons, another pastor can preach that that deliverance is not necessary. You don't need it. Even though Jesus said that in my name you shall cast out demons. So the man said that there are pastors you saw here. They pray to discourage the one God has called and chosen. That means that if you don't know the purpose of what you are doing, people will talk about it, you will stop. Listen, yeah. when Jesus came on earth one day, Jesus was standing in the Sahindrin preaching, and there was a man who has a withered hand. And Jesus told the man, stand up. And he asked a question. Is it good to do it? it, 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 it which one? He said that. It was, is it good to do good in the Sabbath or to do evil? To save life or to lose life? Religiously, they've turned the Sabbath into something. And he told the man, stretch your hand. And he said, which one of you that when your donkey fall into a pit on a Sabbath day, you won't take him? But religious people say that. Let's take the donkey, but don't let a sick person be here. So what is something? Don't just listen to people because they have title. Listen because they are preaching from the way. Don't just listen to people because they have names. Make sure there is a church in the house of the apostle. The Bible said that after they hear the word, they go back to the house and analyze and check whether the things Paul was saying is true. It was where the nickname Christianity started. This thing, when it started in the way, it's called the way. In the Old Testament, in the absolute apostle, Christianity was called the way. If you read the Bible, the way, the way. It became Christian through those words, the church of Be- huh? Berea, the church of Berea, they are the people, as a result of that, the way Christianity means Christ-like, they were behaving like Christ. So the way Christianity, and say is a nickname. There is no way Jesus talk about Christian in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's not in the Gospels. Jesus never mentioned anything about Christian. 
The word Christ means the anointed one with his anointing. So Christos, that is where the Greek word is coming from. The anointed one with his anointing. So Christianity to, to Am I teaching? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor tomorrow you have to be here. If you have to walk on the cars on the traffic, walk on them. When I'm kind, when I said, I'm with you, so I'm over. Don't tell me that you stay online because I'm going to do some. Some of you, it's not just online. I'm going to continue the deliverance. See, and deliver our warrior and your papa. And you're my gumu. Let's end with this one. Oh, am I teaching this morning? Do you love it? Let's end with this one. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, I'm writing that marriage is not an experiment. Mm. Number two, marriage is God's idea. Tomorrow I'll show you marriage is a divine design for the celebration of love. So one of the places you can celebrate love is in marriage. It's a divine design for the celebration of love. It is a divine design for the reproduction of the human race. Divine design for the reproduction of the human race. Am I moving too fast? Because I'm trying to close very fast. Mm. Number one, it is a divine design for the celebration of love. So when you want to celebrate love, it show up in the marriage. Hallelujah. Yeah. Husband, love your wife. Say that with me. Husband, love your wife. Hallelujah. If you are sitting by a woman, tell the man, uh, he, 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 he. look at the man and tell the man, when you marry a woman, love the woman. Tell the person, love the woman. Yeah, it's a divine command. Love, love. We'll talk about that along the line. It's a divine design for the reproduction of the human race. So the marriage contest, let me tell you this. This is another statistic I read in America that 85% of people in prison come from a broken home. It means that it is a sin to have children and not raise or take care of them. It's, let me put it this way. It's not just a sin, it's a curse. So to give birth to children and not take care of them is a curse. All the men, please, with all respect, lift up your right hand. To give birth to a man, to give birth to a child with your hands lifted and not take care of the child, your hand is a witness, it's a curse. Because some person will come by to hey, who don't say cut at once? Whether you lift it or bring it down, this is it. Douglas, say part in your no wa be shakola no. No African men we love sex, but we don't want responsibility. That's what we don't. How many people in Africa were raised by mothers? How many? I'm a victim. Huh? I'm a victim. Four boys were raised by one woman. I'm doing one that told my wife, I said, girl, I'm doing well. Though. Don't ever con- don't get confused. May I the power? I was not raised by a man. When I saw the way my wife started correcting my son, then I saw how my mother has tried. The way he deals with the son, I realized that this one, he doesn't know what he's doing. Because this one is only a father who can handle it. So if you are raised by a woman, it can even affect your marriage. And let's go. This is where you need Christ in. There are things that Aquaman does. When I come in, sometimes my eye is a statement. When I move my eye, he will stop. That means that a boy needs to grow with a father. There are questions he asks me, his mother can't answer. Don't I come to me that this and this? What is the meaning of this? And I begin to explain to him because I've been there before. (laughs) 
And that is a reason why God doesn't want us to have sex anyhow. Because when you're having sex with a woman, anything can come out of it. And what can come out of it, apart from Minko, <laughs> is a child. It's a child. And the child comes with responsibility. So the reason God wants sex to be done in the context of the marriage is that it comes with responsibility. Eh? No sex is free. It's a Wednesday message. No sex is free. No. Back when I was here, last four years, it's free. No sex is free. That is why even the prostitute charge. So, the guy that you are sleeping with, that he is still giving you money, in the spiritual realm, it is not free. When I finish preaching that message, that, that one, I won't tell you the day I will preach it because when I tell you, you won't come. So I won't tell you. Me tell that day, make us a anointing service. Now I'm back. It's not free. It's awful. No sex. That is why I was here Friday cutting you off. It means that we are paying the IRS. No sex is free. Take it from your mind. Obia on any bed, Debia is not free. The people that charge you, they are invisible. You don't see that. Touch somebody's body if it's hot. A man, touch a man's body. If a man is sitting, touch his body. And check the temperature level. If the person's body is hot, tell him to stand up. If you touch somebody's body, so tell him, brother, why are you hot? I say, do it. Touch somebody. If you're a woman, touch somebody and tell the person, stand up. Hey, they, he says, stand up, stand up. This guy's body is hot. <laughs> this is how you are a suspect. African man, no sex is free. It's not free. It's not free. Don't try it. Wait until you marry. Number two, when you marry, ha, Stay with one woman till Jesus comes. Receive grace. I say receive grace. Receive grace. I don't care what you have done in the past. Today let's end it. God doesn't have a problem your past. That's a problem the repetition of the past mistakes. Your wife Jane. That does not mean you will not get attracted. That does not mean other women will not get attracted to you. That is where you go to the fruit of the spirit and pull one called self-control. And you walk with it. I'm getting attracted to this woman by for Christ's sake. I'm getting attracted to that woman for, for Christ's sake. Something about this woman is pulling me by for Christ's sake. So you run away. So Jacob said, Mrs. Potiphar, hey, it's not that I'm not a man, but I have a covenant somewhere. Listen to what he said. What can I do such a thing against the law? He brought God into the equation. Until the moment you are ready to sing, bring God into the equation. One of my friends was doing natural service, and one lady who was making advances toward the lady said, you, you are not a man, you are impotent. I will prove it. He proved it and lost his calling after today. It is that the woman you sleep, you can't preach again. Your mother, you are not a man, you are not a man, you are not a man, you are not a man. He died grinding pepper. Great man of God. Bible says, after David finished sleeping by Sheba, he couldn't accomplish any great thing again. Even God didn't permit him. If God wouldn't let him build the temple, he would have let him buy the materials. He bought all the materials for the temple, but God didn't let him build it. He said, blood is in your hand. I said, Lord, where is that blood? All the people David killed, he inquired from you, and you tell him to go and kill. So why are you calling blood? He said, the blood of urea. That one, I didn't give him permission. <laughs> How many of you are married here? Lift your hand. Keep your hand up. I want to make a statement. Let it enter your spirit. Celebrate your marriage. Amen. Protect your marriage. Amen. 
What is the first thing you have to do? No adulterer can celebrate his marriage. Number two, do what? Make your marriage the priority focus of your life. Make your marriage the priority focus of your life. I'll try a back Make your marriage the priority focus of your life. It means that let your wife's happiness be your major priority. Let your husband's peace of mind be your major. It means that a good woman will be concerned about his husband's quietness. Honey, are you okay? Why are you quiet? Have I offended you? Is everything okay in the office? It's not that. Now, why didn't you do this? I could copy a cock and shop and say, Dear Ben. But I said, I'm a better man. I said, I'm a better man. I'm a better man. That's why I said, celebrate your marriage, protect it. It's not an insult. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody needs love. If you see your husband is not happy, fine now. If it's a prayer, pray. A woman knows how to comfort. It's naturally in you. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. When I bring you to what I call seduction, then I'll tell you that you are built to seduce. But it depends on the channel you can it to. So somebody said, sometime I call my husband after I finish buffet, and then I come and say, I need my, my waist. Come and press my waist for me. Seduction. Oh, don't stop me. What is that? What kind of hypocrisy is that? Depends on where you channel it, it becomes a weapon of mass destruction. Not the same thing. You can channel it somewhere. Hallelujah. That's what it is. Amen. So, there is nothing like, now, I don't know. You know, there's a message I have. I can only preach it to women. I told you about that message. I can only preach it to women. One of them is the point just I gave it to you. I can only preach it to women. The seduction is in you. Yes, those who are using it to trap other people, the devil is just using it. But you can also use it to stabilize your marriage. That means that you can change your husband's mood by your seduction. There's something, there's something you give to your man, you calf his nerves. The nerves will calm down. You calm the nerves. There's a way you handle a man. All the vibration will stop. There's also a way you handle him. You, you increase the tempo of the vibration. That means I watch this. I will teach you some characters in the Bible that they were smart women. Abigail has saw that his husband is a fool. But she is not a fool. And the husband has dealt with one of the anointed guys around. And Abigail ran to meet David. And look at the way he talked. Hey, that's him. Hmm. I'm fat out. Papa, we or you Jimmy for? But what the what you dachi here? No, that is what is in the Bible. I am only quoting the key one. And by the time Abigail finished with David, he calmed that military guy. It was so strong that when the husband died, David meditated about it. David went to him and said, "Wow, how can a fool get this woman to marry?" She even looked at the woman around and said, "Why, Papa, we?" That is why I say that it is no good to marry and not improve mm. and not grow. Mm. It is not good for your husband to see that there is no development in you. You have no change. Dressing, no change. Character, no change. Hairstyle, no change. Positions of sleeping, no change. So it's very important. Yes, sir. You have to not listen. And I'm bring this, the, the strongest message I'm going to preach is that don't take each other for granted. And you see, okay, that one is a demonic attack for Christian marriages. We take one another for granted. And this one, you have to have grace to preach it. 
Because when you preach instead of repenting, they get offended. No. Do you know why it is dangerous? That man that you call your husband, somebody is interested in him. See, every man from your father, pastor working, to whoever is at the back, the Obeme whether you are married or not, another woman is interested. Somebody wish your husband is his husband. And if you don't know, I'm telling you. And if you don't believe it, that is your, believing is a choice. The reason you cannot be careless is that because Ghana ratio shows that women are four times more than men. America, they say it's around seven. They told me in America, there are some ladies, eh, white people, we did 35 years, Ubianka saw Donida. That is why some people can get used to and they became to love, channel that love to dogs. Animals. So now around that, and it become complicated when you don't know Christ. Mm. Because mm. when you have Christ, eh, the love of Christ alone will not let you develop appetite for anything until the time comes. But if you don't have Christ, yes, there is emptiness, there is void. Yeah. 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 No, there are some, they go close to Christ and they don't even want disturbances. So sometimes they don't even want to get married because the love of Christ. Especially when they have seen some life before. But if you have never encountered Christ, the void is too strong. The vacuum is too big. Let me tell you something. Don't take each other for granted. Especially if you're a woman. Don't take your husband for granted because he speaks in tongues. I'm going to bring you to that stage. I'm going to bring you to that stage. And I'll tell you that when God said, man, look at the outward, it came from God's mouth. It didn't come from mama. He said, somewhere, man, look at the The man's weakness is his eye. Then maybe on them we are saying, so when somebody to trap and never saw the man, I want your own. So when to a bad trap, I want your own. Any baby I'll be so. This is the trap of a woman. Ni ever fan asum. It is it is difficult to trap a woman with the eyes, but you can trap her with words. That is why when the devil can be spoke to Eve. A woman, what she want to hear, you you bring her to your arms. Period. But when it comes to a man, it has to do with the eyes. So, and let me tell you something. I'm going to take all the marriage women that I don't care what you think. Eh? There is something about you that attracted you to the man, no matter how spiritual he is. No, no, thank God the men are clapping. God bless you, man. You, the woman don't clap. I'll tell you. I've not started preaching. Lucky. After 40 years, 50 years, 10 years, BB, BB. There are men, they get attracted to dark women. In the color of never one. Because how? Only God can explain love. Only God can explain how we get attracted to things. There were Tadebi who be she will the channel crown. But somebody is dying. Eh? I was working in America and I told them, Send Tadeo in Grofoto. And I was standing there, people came to buy it. And the guy was dying. I'm so happy. I got there. I said, I go away. What about them? We are Tadeo, yes, sir. But that's what it is. And the Lord told me, Say that, no, that's the way I make human beings. That is why when you marry, you can't force your will on your partner. Hear this. No. When you wear a good dress, you feel good. There's something about mm. Mm. Huh? Mm. 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 There are some dresses, the only place we can see. In fact, sometimes we cry about our jam because you say, Oh, yeah, with my phone, see here. And that's how we knew Saturday in FMP. What I did about the bar, sorry, my neck. You have a bow as a near show. So the address is we don't bring it to church. That means that there are entadia was No, somebody told me, somebody said something. I don't think it's a good advice, but I heard somebody said that if you want to watch, see what your husband loves, 
watch movie with him. Wow. And see his comment about the way and watch the be a very reverse movie in what Sanche be. Sorry, John, how many were we? This one is not take it, take it. This one is wisdom. Just pour wisdom on you. Don't take it for granted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, tell my grandma and worry, you know, a different from your generation. Completely. Your generation, you know, my sister. When you ten years from now, so they are going to prepare and get married. Maybe less. I don't know. But almost some generation, there are things they are facing. Yesterday, God told me their generation challenge is what they watch. So before you raise their children, Hollywood will raise them. Until what we do is that we cannot stop them, but we have to teach them the other side and lift them and tell them the dangers of the one they are watching and the benefit of this one I'm teaching you. Make decision for yourself. So a good marriage is not a gift, it's a choice. But I ever started. How do I choose to make the marriage work? Tomorrow I present you the Ten Commandments of a sound matrimonial. Thou shall, thou shall, thou shall, thou shall, thou shall, thou shall. And in case of thou shall, thou shall, thou shall, I'll give it to you solid. Over to another board. I'm t- because if a children grow in a home with father and mother they naturally can continue that legacy but if you come from a broken home then you must repair and start building solid is it liquid or solid that's what it is amen and we are going to teach you on wednesday that you must begin to pray that what affects you will not travel to your children so that there are some days it's going to be purely spiritual. Amen. You're buying your teacher and Bible. You're fat topics, you know, one, 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 one. So you started from generation. What did it, what affected my grandfather that I see it repeated in my mother? Yeah. Then you won't come to me. So we call it a line of demarcation. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, God showed me that there are people from family in the spirit realm. They have mandated never to travel. Amen. It means that they don't refuse you a visa because your documents are not good. In the spirit realm, you are not supposed to travel. Amen. That means that you are not supposed to see the inside of an aircraft. So, it should be African uh, uh, passing air. It should be passing air to Kumasi. And you can't hear the Kumasi, which means I'm back. I'm telling you, passing air. But one day, be, one day, be a uh, cop, make cop, baby. Do you remember that story? I was going to do something at Kumasi. Ah, yeah, cause I parody. Hey, man, I'm better praying. I say, I mean, the weather is not too good. And then, what I'm sure we do, I'm saying, what are you good? What are you good? The Lord told me in the play, somebody is not supposed to sit in a play who have come to sit there. It means that Kumasi cry, I'm a wound. Now, my dear, yeah, mama, you see, yeah, pet. Yeah, land here. Captain Francis and all our pilot is aircraft. No, Madam is my neighbor. My friend, we see up as a prophet. I don't know. I see two things happen. Number two, number one, the weather was no good. He was going to land, and they negotiated for another aircraft to take off. Now he said, every aircraft is a decision of the pilot. The decision the pilot will make. Sometimes trying to escape something can rather lead to crash. So looking at the situation. Say plane back then two them not catch or land there a bit market problem. So once I turn and not turn it up, his plan was to go and wind and come back and it started raining. Then he said, I can't see the runway. So he came back to Accra. You see up a quick was hey to come out to me, my man could do. What happened? I'm saying, right, it's like Jonah in your boat. Every Jonah in your boat this week, 
May the Lord throw that Jonah into the water so that you can arrive. If you are not, if your army is not louder, you are where you are still. Akwabi Timothy Juntu was in the command of my mama man could do, and now I say every day. Captain Francis, I said, no. we are waiting when the rain stop, we'll go. But Danny, it was frightening. That's why I saw a plane would can negotiate to land and then take off again. I can't Kasai or Kasai pa me me shen is say yaus. Hey, enti kumasi usuma mama ngo do. I don't bone cry no my emu kumasi. You arrive at your destination. <laughs> Lift up your holy hands. That means that see, this is the complication. If I am in the agro, if you are man, if you are meant to go somewhere, you can go and marry a man or a woman who is meant to go nowhere. It means that after that marriage, you have entered warfare. See, Saul has a daughter. He made David go and kill Philistines. About a thousand, how many number of them? And brought as a dowry. The reason is that Saul wanted David to be killed by the Philistines. And then he said that when David finished, he didn't give the daughter to David. Then Micah fell in love with David. This is what Saul said. Saul said, he heard that Micaiah is in love with David. It's okay. I will give it to him so that you become a snare. That thing caught my attention. So you can marry a man and you are the snare. You can marry a woman. But one mom, you are in a trap. Listen, marriage is not a place to be prayerless. Contrary to after you marry, children do they hold people's mouth from praying children no if you understand this dynamics you will not understand you you will not go the way you are going in tawarebi akowarea literally waware because one can say you are going somewhere He's not supposed to go anywhere. And I hope I will drag you to the shore where you are going. It will not come on a silver platter. There must be warfare. One day, Yeko Israel, I sponsored some people to go to Israel. One of them make a statement. Yeko, I'm going say, Papa, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, his confession make a way for him. I heard a man of God say he was carrying a man to Israel. They got to the airport and the guy fell into coma. When they called them to board the plane, some of you tears had a collapse, he fell into coma. Plane need two epena or bar back to life. I happened more than four times. I see that a fossil now, a fossil bomb by didn't go to Israel. Oko do a wayly war. A man is also a bombpire. I have been a soldier for them because in the wayly war, when you lift your hand, it's like you are demonstrating a suicide bomber. Yemua no. It took diplomatic talk before they brought it. Lift up your. After this testimony, if you don't pray, you pray again. If you don't join, I guess I na me kwa embassy. I have a visa, my man. Anya anya consular. Forces are begging a consular nechi. You can have a dream and see the practical demonstration of it. Bible. A man of God's son was going to travel. He called me. He was going to school. The boy has visitors visa or America. He applied for the student visa. They refused the visa. They used the word decline. So after then, why? He has to call some who you know. And then he go to the ambassador of the country and then they come. They asked the consular why he said, I don't know. I don't know why I did it. And no matter when you refuse to report visa, you must give an explanation. He didn't give an explanation, he just left it there. Then he find out that 
Nobody in the family mm. has tried to do PhD. Mm. And it's the first one. Mm. It is sometimes between your level to the next mm. level. And to them. So the reason you are fighting a battle is that the battle that has appeared is because you are about to move to your next level. If you give up, they block you there. You will not sit in any car or boat or ship or plane with any strange agent of the enemy sitting inside. If somebody is programmed not to land at their destination, and they come to your boat, may the Lord drop there. Hey. Lift up your two hands. Marco Dibi Atoya. Now listen. I want to give you a prayer point. There is a battle you are fighting. Bibi Kosu whom you can't explain. In the office, they don't like you. There is a gang up against you. There is a kind of orchestration against your life. Suddenly, some people that are supposed to love you first, they've changed their attitude towards you. And the bottom line is because you are about to move to your next level. This morning, you want to announce to the devil that whether you like it or not, you are on your way there. Amen. Lift up your voice and declare by prophetic prayer that any hindrance to your next level, you will hand over the battle to God. You will travel to that country. You will go places. You will be to the United States. You will be to London. You will further your call. Open your mouth and pray. Somebody watching me all now. There is a reason your documents are delayed. Your green card must come. That green card, they must be given to you. Something must happen. Whatever is blocking it, hand it over to God. Hand it over to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
in your finances, in your marriage, in your traveling, business ideas, your visa to that country, every opposition, let God fight for you. Lift your two hands, ask God to fight for you. Lord, I transfer this battle to your hand. Fight my enemies. Fight them. Oh, <laughs> 